long time awaited. Hi. It's been a minute since we talked. <laughs> People, family, and friends. Um, season two. We here with Queen, the one and only. You know, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, how you feeling today? Man, I'm feeling grand. This is a grand day. Grandiose. Yes, sir. Big. Grand day. <laughs> So, last time we talked, it was a, uh, it was for a year, June, but you know what I'm saying? It was the start of this. So it's only right that we full circle it, bring it back. She's starting off season two. No. Tell us, uh, tell us a little about yourself, your journey, some beginning notes okay. for the folks. Uh, well, I am queen. Um, so, you want to know about like my health journey or just like my journey as a person? We do both. We do both. We got time. Um, so, my health journey, pretty much I was like having a lot of problems with my menstrual cycle. And I was like going to the doctor for it like a lot. Like I was think I was going to the doctor like twice, at least once a month um, to try to help alleviate these issues. And like what they were doing was they just kept giving me like higher and higher doses of ibuprofen until I got to like 800 milligrams of ibuprofen. And like, I remember like, cause I was about, this was probably up until I was like 18, like from 14 to 18. And I just remember thinking as an adolescent, I was like, this isn't helping. Like this isn't helping. And when I did more research, I found out that ibuprofen doesn't like elite, doesn't fix the problem it just um, blocks your brain's pain inhibitors so that you don't feel like you know what's going on but it's not actually fixing the problem so and that's kind of just like every time I would call them because like I was in pain and shit they would just be like oh yeah just take more ibuprofen just take more ibuprofen I'm like this is not helping the problem like uh, like it was just a band-aid so um I started doing my own research and I started um, learning just about how diet can, how much of an impact diet has on your body. And um, I grew up like a typical American child eating like chicken nuggets, hot dogs, like, you know, the Kraft mac and cheese, you know, the basic like carcinogen filled American food. And um, I was also a food science major in high school, so that also really piqued my interest in nutrition and like how I could use it, nutrition to help change my life. Um, so I was really just like going in on it and learning more. And I remember I wanted to be like vegetarian for a long time. I was just like not in control of what my household was buying, but my mom was pretty accommodating to like, you know, she would buy a little like morning star stuff here and there. Um, but in 2017, it was 2016 or 2017, that's when I really like took, I really committed myself to making the change. Um, and I was like working at Wawa, so I didn't have much money. I was like <laughs> hungry a lot of the time, but like I knew that I wanted to make the change to my diet because what I was originally doing didn't, wasn't helping. So along the line, like I like just, started decreasing meat from my diet more and more and I really started seeing differences like I went from having like eight nine day long periods that were like painful like I would have to either like not go to school not go to class just be in bed like balled up in pain waiting for it to stop to having four or five day longs and like you know a lot lighter and just like feeling like I was getting my life back and it was like no doctor had told me like huh you should probably change your diet like huh your diet will probably help you like changing your diet will probably help you but um so me doing that research on my own and like figuring out how to take my health into my own hands has really changed my life substantially you know um so that's Sorry. health um and just with life and stuff hold on before what? we before we get to life like what kind of steps or advice would you give somebody that's going through like painful uh periods like painful menstrual cycles yeah um just know that like 
it doesn't have to be like that like you can really like take power over it um also to the um sacred woman book by queen of Fua helped me quite a bit um and that's a book like you don't even have to like sit and read it page to page like if you just go to the index there most likely what you're experiencing will be in that book like you can literally just go to the index and go find whatever you're looking for in the book i would say like it doesn't have to be like that um you just have to commit yourself to your you have to commit yourself to yourself and commit yourself to your body and listen to what your body is trying to tell you like for example like with me like i remember like I ate like a five guys burger and that joint was crazy. I had like, it was like a double bacon, double patty burger. Like that joint was like, and it tasted amazing. But I remember the After next day, <laughs> the next day I was on the bathroom floor, like rolled up in pain. And that was my body telling me, listen, like this is too much for me to process. Like I can't, like this is so difficult for me. So you have to like listen when your body gives you those signals. And even if it's not like pain, like, you know, if you're just like not going to the bathroom, if you're experiencing like, you know, just bloating, like just being uncomfortable, like stuff like that, that is your body trying to communicate with you, trying to tell you like, listen, something's not working here. So it's up to you to figure it out. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just completely cutting everything out and becoming a raw vegan and living your life like that. Like, no, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that because everything works different for everybody. So, like, even if it's just, like, cutting back on meat, drinking more fruit juices, like, eating more whole foods, like, just adjusting your diet to the point where, like, you know, you're experiencing less pain, less problems. And um, it doesn't happen overnight. It definitely takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what works for you. But just know that, like, you know, it will get better if you commit yourself to it. And it doesn't have to be, like, you know, a painful, like horrible experience because as women like our periods is one of our signifying factors that like shows us like you know hey like i'm a woman and i have the power to bring life into this world mm -hmm. you know so listening to your like because that's your body's cleansing period that's your body like you know, that's when your body is cleaning everything out and getting ready to start the cycle all over again and if you think about it that's really how life is like you should definitely be like cleaning out and like you know getting rid of all the negative stuff to start your cycle over again so just listen to your body and know that like you have the power to feel good you know you have that power you just have to take it into your hands metaphor real quick i was talking to this young lady and i'm like we we saying like i'm like yeah that's the cleansing your body is cleansing itself she like no it's just like too much testosterone and i'm like or no, she said it's balancing hormones. So I'm like, well, if it's balancing the hormones and you got too much testosterone, that means you're toxic in a sense. So that's still cleansing. But you just think about it as like, you know, if you hoard in too much stuff in your house or your room or whatever, then the cleaning or cleansing process is going to be more difficult. And it's the same thing with your body. like. If you don't have bowel movements every day or if you're not releasing whether that's sweating and uh breathing properly exercising and stuff like that then the cleansing is going to be that much more difficult in a sense but you know that, it's that, possible come on it's definitely possible <laughs> cooking has been the reason why i was able to change my diet because before i changed my diet i swore i knew how to cook putting tater tots in the oven but that's not it so um just re like i said pinterest was really the determining factor because like watching videos and like reading recipes and like you know just putting all of that information in my brain has helped me substantially um it's just like learning how because when i was a kid i did not like vegetables i was like a corn carrots maybe some broccoli if i could cover it in cheese but i wasn't really eating vegetables so learning to cook and learning how to prepare things the way that i like is what really helped me change my diet and now like i just make it all types of stuff like stuff i never thought i would like i never thought i would like bok choy and like <laughs> like um different types of like greens and like all types of stuff like that like i never thought i would like those things as a kid but knowing how to prepare it 
knowing how to prepare it um, specifically towards my taste palette has changed my life completely. Um, some of my favorite things to cook, um, mushroom stroganoff, like that's like a go-to for me over some rice. Um, I eat a good amount of like fish and I'll do like lemon pepper fish and like uh, lasagna, pastas, stuff like that. But stuff like my thing is anything that I see that I'm like, oh, that looks good. I'm like, okay, I'm a veganize it, you know? So a lot of things that I see or that I used to enjoy when I was eating more meat in my diet, I'll just like either find the recipe or find out how to wing it and make it vegan. And that's pretty much how that went. <laughs> the nuts, I eat the nuts, okay. Uh, oh, the soups too, you be oh, yeah. soups heavy too, right? Soupy season coming up, y'all. <laughs> yeah. I love soup, um, but uh, I have like IBS, so sometimes it's sometimes it can be very hard for me to digest foods. But soup is something that's always like soup is like a warm blanket to me. Like no matter what, I know that if I just need to like calm my digestive system down a bit, I can make some soup and I can like digest it, and I'll be okay. Um, but black bean soup that's like my favorite right now but black bean cream of mushroom um broccoli cheddar like and all of these things like i've learned how to make vegan you know um but soup definitely has like has a strong warm hold on me like it'll always hold a special place in my heart speaking on uh the ibs the irritable bowel syndrome yes, for the folks that don't know uh, I know I know I know some people out there that's going through it and they may not be aware that they have it or they just don't know a lot of information around it how to maneuver around it so you got any like tips and advice to I know you was also following the, uh, the diet was it with the shades the, like the, the what it was like certain shades of foods that you couldn't consume and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I got diagnosed with IBS when I was probably like 14. And my mom has it, so it's definitely a hereditary thing. My mom has it, and my sister, she doesn't have it as bad, but she also struggles with it from time to time. Um, when you, so it's something called the low FODMAP diet. And that's, I cannot tell you exactly what every letter stands for, but if you look it up, Google can. And um, pretty much it's certain foods that can irritate your digestive system. So pretty much it's two different types of IBS. Well, three really. It's um, IBS C dominant, IBS D dominant, and IBS combined. So IBS C dominant is constipation, IBS, IBS D dominant is diarrhea, and combined is when you suffer from both. I am IBS C dominant, so if I eat something that throws off my digestive system, I'm just like, that <laughs> I didn't think I would be on here talking about my balance. <laughs> <laughs> Look, transparency at its finest. Um, not gonna get this nowhere else. <laughs> but pretty much, um, there's certain foods that can, that can irritate your IBS. So with the C dominant form, it's um, pretty much my body isn't absorbing the water from the food that I eat correctly. And because of that, my body has a hard time passing food through. So certain things that I know will irritate it is like wheat or gluten products, um, wheat or gluten products, uh, rice. Like if I eat like white rice specifically, white rice will like completely like end me. Um, but those are some of the main things. What they suggest with like the low fat diet is that you look it up and that you um, and that you just clean your clean your system out and don't have any of the foods on the FODMAP list and you slowly introduce them and record how your body reacts. And if your body reacts negatively, you know that's a food that you have sensitivity to. And if your body is okay, then you know that's a food that you don't have sensitivity to. It's definitely a process. Um, and 
it's like I mean some people are extremely strict with it I personally like you know I know that there's certain stuff that I like I know that if I eat rice then I might have to follow up and um, make some like lectin soup or something that'll kind of help clean out my system but um, beans dragon fruit prune juice <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to you about this helping people helping lots of people <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think what else, uh, that like, if you look it up, like there's like a long list of foods that'll help and foods that will hurt IBS. But, um, first is like acknowledging that you have it. If like a lot of time when you eat, if you're not like eliminating, like if you're not eliminating for how many meals you're eating in a day, and if you're just like having trouble eliminating period, like if you can go multiple days without going, then that's a key sign. If like, you know, a lot of things that you eat can cause like your bowels to get loose, can cause like, you know, um, just frequent going, that could be a sign as well. Um, but no, if you, the first step is knowing if you feel like there's any of these things that could be leading to it. Um, and also, too, the main thing with it is if you are if you're experiencing these things when you feel stressed out, like if you get really stressed and then all of a sudden you can't go to the bathroom or you're going too much, like that's a key sign for it as well. Um, but if you think you have it or if you know you have it, I recommend looking up the low FODMAP diet and just trying to either stay away from those foods, doing the full cleanse, and then like reintroducing foods. But um, it definitely makes a difference when, because I had to um, completely switch to gluten-free bread. You know, um, regular bread just doesn't fuck with me. So, um, but making those changes to your diet so that you can live a more comfortable life it makes a huge difference in that way like you know if you do go out like for eat or go to a family dinner or something and you do have something it's not as bad because you haven't been doing it for you know what i'm i'm gonna say that for me i'm gonna say that specifically for me everybody's different but i know for me with having more consciousness over my diet if i do eat something with wheat or something with flour um, it's not as bad because I'm doing more to um, aid the process of elimination for my body. And um, like when you was following the low fat mop, what, uh, like how long did it take for you to like see changes? I mean, it's like, it's kind of difficult to say because for me, I'll have like some weeks where I'm really, really good and I even eat some things that's on the list and I'll still be good. But I'll have some days where it's like, you know, just multiple days of just like trash. Um, so um, it depends. For me, the main factor is how well I'm, how well I'm managing my stress. Like that's the main thing that trips it out. Um, but I will definitely say that the main thing was eliminating bread from my diet and just eating gluten-free bread. That's what made the hugest difference for me. So, and the thing about IBS is it's like a lifelong thing. It's not like something that goes away or that can be cured. Um, so it's kind of just like an everlasting battle of listening to your body and everybody's body is different. So just kind of kind of getting to know what foods trigger you and what foods don't make a huge difference um but just also knowing what foods really help like you know like what foods like whenever you're in a bind like will help get things moving that's um substantially important as well but it varies for everybody if anybody know me you know i got that thing on deck that thing i keep that thing on deck that, that thing, hydration that hydration the waves. Mm -hmm. They say get water. I say get water. Melon. Melon. Come on. So she knew about the watermelon. I did. But she was just like recently. What you say? He was like, <laughs> "Thank you for your advocacy to watermelon supremacy." Come on, watermelon worldwide takeover. Because we had uh, we had my friend's juicer in our house for a minute. And I, cause I, I like watermelon, but I'm like a really texture sensitive person. So eating a watermelon and having to like the seeds and shit, like I'm not crazy about that. So putting that joint through the juicer, putting it through the juicer, the what? The 
it changed my whole life. Like, oh my gosh, it's so good, so fresh. Just like, it makes your body feel like yourselves, and they're Dancing. like, yeah, they happy Having in there, party. you know. <laughs> Look, next to is watermelon, coconut. They the top two for me. Hydration. Mm -hmm. It don't get much better than that. Hydration is important. That's another thing for IBS. If you are not hydrated, you playing yourself. You got to make sure that you hydrate it so you like moving the waste out of your system properly. Not even for, just for IBS, for just Bowels anybody. in general. Yeah, like, you know, you got to be, you got to be like... Lubricated. Yes. Because if, you're, uh, if your colon is dehydrated, that's why they say like 15, I mean, a uh, majority of Americans got like 15 to 20 pounds or five to 20 pounds of backed up waste because yes. it's like dehydrated, compacted yes. waste in the colon. So yes. that's one of the first steps is, you know, hydration. And then you got the stretching and the breathing and the exercising that's going to help as well. Then you got the fasting and you got to just eating foods that's not going to... Uh, that your body knows what to do with it because if the foods are like genetically modified or you know um your body doesn't recognize it as whole foods then a lot of it is going to be just waste product and it's going to be like like sticking to your walls in a sense and just causing problems Definitely. um and uh detox that i recommend it's called the cleaner they have a men's version and they have a woman's version but it's like a all in body detox like um your like your digestive system your urinary tract your skin like yeast all of that it cleans all of that out and it's in a pill form so it's just like you just take like four pills i think four pills a day or four pills twice a day um whatever works for you but that's a really good that's a really good reset like you know to digest to um get all of that waste out of your body and start fresh afterwards 